people are what's got us here. And I've been a believer for my whole life that honey is more effective than vinegar. And I think, I've been thinking about this a bunch recently, maybe because I've been traveling and noticing the difference in the way that people act is how pleasant it is to be around nice people. Today, I'm excited to share a conversation I had with my friend Dan Canary, the CEO and founder of Harpoon Brewery. Dan holds a 100% CEO approval rating on Glassdoor and is a big advocate for a people-first work environment. We talked about the value of creating a company culture that is reflected in every employee and going above and beyond to treat everyone like family. Dan also shares how he embraces change to create an exemplary workplace. Enjoy. I am so fortunate to be here with Dan Canary, the founder of Harpoon Brewery in 1986. You were one of the originals in craft brewing, if you know, sort of category leader in IPA, category leader in vice beer. It's been a, it's been fun. It's been a fun 34 year ride. As you've seen your company go from 10 to 50 to 200, you know what what's changed, at, like how you impact the culture uh, from the top down. When you were 10 people, I'm sure it was you and your partners were the culture. That's right. That's right. Now you rely on many more people to represent and promote that culture every single day. So it's not, it's obviously not just me. I need to take advantage of the roles that I have. We have monthly company meetings, for example, and I take advantage of when we gather together as a company to really talk about a couple of issues that are on my mind about culture. And it's more, you know, you can do something, for example, in my role as CEO, right, we've been facing some financial challenges. We took on a lot of debt to become an ESOP, and it's been challenging. I talk really very openly about that, openly in a very vulnerable way and passionately about where we are as employee owners together. And I've just heard from a lot of people that that's done so much to kind of reinforce the culture in the sense of we are in this together. Yep. There's an open, open atmosphere here that there's not a them versus us or senior managers are up doing something else um, and gotten a real sense that that's reinforced who we are from my level. And then you're quiet, your middle managers, it's just me being close to them and working with them on mundane things like the annual performance review, right? Which is a powerful tool if done well. So I take great care in certain things like that structure that we have in place that I know reinforces our culture. Now you told me a story of one of your employees took it upon themselves. Someone complained about one one of the, like a six pack of beer, I'm, I'm mixing this, but the person who worked for you like went and brought that guy like a six pack of beer and you now have a client yeah. for life. Like, how do you find a person who goes that far above and beyond and says, this is the right you thing You know, to do? Mike, it's a golden rule. Treat others as you'd like to be treated. I mean, think about our experiences you've had where you have either had an incredible customer service experience or a lousy one. Yeah. And the difference, how it makes you feel about that company. It was not ever a directive that came down from me. I kind of learned that because of the way that this person behaved because he heard from our QC guy, we have our manager, QC manager, handle all of our complaints directly. It doesn't go to some anonymous you know, complaint line. Right. And so that person said, hey, I know that this guy lives up near this person who complained. And like, would you ever just drop a 12 pack, surprise this person and drop a 12 pack on their back porch? And as I said, that person has gone on to be married, had harpoon at all their, had their wedding, and is a lifer with us. And that is not an isolated incident. That's amazing that you have that personal touch. Well, you know, people are what's got us here. And I've been a believer for my whole life that honey is more effective than vinegar. And I think I've been thinking about this a bunch recently, maybe because I've been traveling and noticing the difference in the way that people act is how pleasant it is to be around nice people. Well, how do you approach hiring? You know, what's your favorite interview question? How involved do you get? In, in I get involved, you know, depending on the, the, the level of the hire, the more involved I get. Like we hired our first chief marketing officer last year, and I was obviously driving that process and extensively involved. You know, we just hired another salesperson from the New York market. I participated in the group interviews. If I'm here and have the time, I participate in all group interviews. Almost doesn't depend on the level because I care so much about who we hire and um, want to be part of that process. I also want to send the message internally how important I think it is. Um, I do go after more of the culture questions, to be honest with so you. So you might be the culture, grit, heart, passion. Yep, 
in describing, you know, experiences, highlights of their life outside of work? What do they like to do? What has worked for them in a, in a workplace in the past? What hasn't and why? Um, you try to get at what kind of person they are. Again, what we look for is that combination of decent, good people and then drive, yeah. ambition, and comp competitiveness. I mean, if you could put it into words, like what changed, you know, pre-six years, pre-ESOP, post-six years ESOP, what, how would you describe that change? It, the change has been profound. It might not be obvious to everybody, but at the same time we did the ESOP, we kind of hit the most challenging stress on that period since our first five years of business. Sure. Where now there are 8,000 breweries and we started there are 100, for example, right? So um, we're now facing tremendous competition from big breweries, mediums, all the local breweries. So what we have pulled together as an ESOP company, as an employee-owned company in ways I could have never imagined. I would not have wanted to go through this period. So we've hit our most competitive, challenging period since our first five years at a time when we are more levered than we've ever been. The team has gelled and the team doesn't want to be anyplace else. Right. I mean, the stress level's off the charts at times, but I, I, I only hear like, we're gonna go friggin' get it. We're gonna go after it and we're gonna win. You know, why did you do an ESOP and what has that done? Like you're, you're treating your employees like owners because they are owners. They are owners. But it does add complication. Oh, sure it does. And it's not for every business, but if you have a great culture with engaged employees and you can turn them into engaged employee owners, there's tremendous power there. And at all companies, you're treating them like owners. Yeah, and I think if you walked on the other side to our, on the, on the lab side, we have a wall that's full of these ideas from the ideas program that we do. We're, we again communicate to people how they can help us run the business better. So the ESOP, it's complicated. We have to take on a lot of debt to do it, but there, it's a way, a, a transition plan. Hopefully we're gonna do a second ESOP transaction at some point in the next few years where they will buy my stock out. Right. And then, then, then we have the employees could own 100% of the business and, and manage it off into the future. So does it make you feel better that the company, if, if something happened to you, that the company is Totally okay. I remember going to see a great presentation. I forget who it was. Some Harvard Business School professor at an I.O. whatever the thing was in Boston, and she talked about really the best reflection on a, a how tr if you've truly done your job as CEO is what happens to the company after you leave. And I think that's absolutely true. Like the uh, interesting conversations recently about Jack Welch passing. Right. And I believe that's one of my most important jobs is making sure I leave this place in a position to go on to greater success than you've ever achieved so far. Well, that's a perfect place to end. Thank you for your insights. It was Thank you, fun. Mike. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Thank you.